Hey, what's up everyone? So, it's gotten to the point that sifting through an algorithm to try and get the information that you want out of the internet is just not worth it anymore. And so, the solution to that is to just use an RSS reader. Uh, so, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Fresh RSS, which is the RSS reader I, that I use in a Docker container. So, Fresh RSS is a self-hosted RSS reader. Uh, it's really nice, and out of all the self-hosted RSS readers is the only one that I've been able to use without encountering a ton of issues. Um, and so I'll have the GitHub repository for it in the description. And so here, yeah, let's get started. So <clears throat> first things first, you're going to want to make a directory to contain all your configuration and installation files. So I'm going to put mine in my config. Right, I'm just gonna make this directory, and then I will uh, cd into it. So if I go on the repository, I'll go on the Docker install. This will have all the information that you need to install it. All right, so if you just scroll down to doc the Docker Compose section, it'll have all the files you need. So, so first things first is you're gonna want a .env file. And you can just copy that straight from here. Uh, and what this could, this is just going to contain all the variables that are going to be in your Docker Compose file, pretty much. Uh, and you can leave all these as the default because it's just going to be the, the admin login and the database login. The only thing that I'm going to change is going to be the publish port from 8080 to 9090. Um, this doesn't really change anything other than the, the URL and the from which we're going to access fresh rss because i have something running on 8080 so i'm just going to run mine on 9090 and localhost colon 9090. um all right so we can just save that and then down here we're going to want to make the docker compose file which is going to tell docker how to create the container to run uh fresh rss in it and so if you just click here, this will have the full file. We can just copy this whole thing, put it in here. So first off, the volumes, I'm going to change these to have dot dash in front of the names so that the volumes are saved in the same directory that this file is saved in. So the, the volumes that we're going to expose are going to be data and extensions. Data is just going to contain like all your user information, system information, like uh, all the feeds you follow, all the uh, which articles are unread, which articles are favorited, etc. So that when you shut down the Docker container and re-up it, it, the data will be persistent. And then one thing we need to add is going to be the the ports. Just copy this right here. We're going to put the what was it published. Port, and then we're going to expose that from the AD port. I think it was published port. Uh, uh, yeah, it was published port. All right, cool. So now, uh, well, first off, check that you make sure that you have Docker and Docker Compose installed onto your uh, system, and you're going to want to make sure that the daemon is running. So we're going to start the Docker daemon. Uh, and we should be all set so we can sudo docker compose up to set up the container and then dash d which is for a detached so it's going to be running in the background and not take up our terminal space so now we can run this all right no errors so now we should be able to go on localhost colon what your published port was you join 9090 and uh, here we are so now we can do the installation. So language English. Here it's just going to do a bunch of checks to make sure that I have everything installed correctly. Here's going to be the type of database. This is the database that's going to contain your data, your your system data, your user data. Um, and if you're doing what I'm doing, which is just have the 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 server running in a container like this for one user, um, and you're going to have like maybe max 100 feeds, 
you can just do SQLite and have to deal with this. If you're running this for a bunch of people with a bunch of different users, you're gonna wanna use one of these bigger databases. And you can probably find information about those on the, the FreshRSS GitHub repository. And so I'm just gonna do SQLite submit. And here we're gonna make an account. I'm gonna, since I'm the only one using this, uh, I'm gonna have no authentication method, meaning that I'm not gonna have, I don't want a password to have to log in. If other people use your computer or you want multiple accounts, you can do web form and then set a password for yourself. I'm just gonna do none. All right, and then we're done. So now we have everything installed that should be updating. Uh, and while it's doing that, what we can do is we're gonna install our extensions. So what we can do is we're gonna CD into that file again into the extensions. And now this should be empty, right? And what we're gonna look up is fresh RSS extensions. And we're gonna find a GitHub repository by fresh RSS that contains all the official extensions. Um, right here, see? Uh, some of these don't actually work for whatever reason, like colorful list I've never got to work. Um, and the YouTube extension has some errors, but for the most part, these should work. And what I like to do is I'll just copy this whole repository in here because, so that it installs all these extensions because in a fresh RSS, in the extensions tab, you can just enable and disable them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clone this repository right here with the dot so that all the contents sudo so that all the contents are flooded in this directory um, and in the meantime I'm also going to install an extension that I made it's a modification of the colorful list extension because that one doesn't work plus some modifications that I like to have um, and so you can install this as well all these will be in the the description see what what this what, what this extension will do is it'll just it'll color the the name of the feed so that you can see who made it a little easier and it makes it easier to differentiate without having to read who posted it just based on the color so I'm gonna get clone this one without a dot because I don't want to flood the contents this is just the extension itself and now if we go back to the extensions and we refresh the page, it should show, here they are. Here's all the extensions we've installed and we can, it's not showing the, I think I refreshed it to where, here it is. We can activate the extensions that we'd like. Uh, and then custom CSS. These are the ones I like to, and then if I ever want to add reading time, share by email, sticky, whatever, I can just activate these. And then down here, there's more community extensions. You can just browse these and find them. They're installed pretty much the same way. You're going to want to put the file in this directory. All right. Now, uh, in the display, here's where you can change your theme. I like to use the, the Ansem theme. And down here in article icons, you get to kind of customize how the actual flux looks like. So I like to have a summary. I like to keep the star at the bottom line, the publication at the bottom line, and the link at the bottom line. And then here we can also add thumbnails. I don't really like thumbnails too much. They distract me too much from the actual title. Um, and then this should be it. And then we can just click submit, save everything. Go back here, see everything's working. Um, it'll automatically add the releases to your RSS, but you can just remove this off manually. Now, from so from the big from the main page, you click subscription management or plus, it'll let you add a feed or a category. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna walk through how you add a feed manually, just an individual one. I'm gonna add the um, the APOD RSS, the astrology picture of the day by NASA. Add it right here. 
See at the bottom of the page, it'll have RSS. It'll bring you to this RSS page. Where am I? Here am I. Paste the RSS link here and then add it. Submit. And now here we go. When you have the APOD RSS, you can click on these. You can read and unread right here. Uh, if you click on it, it'll show a you can click right here and it'll bring you to the page with the astrology picture of the day. <clears throat> now, if you're coming from a different RSS reader, they hopefully have a export OPML option. Um, so you can download the OPML and import it here, which is what I have right here. I can import and it should import all of them. And then now we can just refresh and it should load up all of my feeds. Cool. Now if we just go on and refresh the page. Here we go. And now once it loads, it'll show the colorful names. And we're gonna scroll down and here's all of the all of my subscriptions at an RS feed without any algorithmic distractions. All right, there we go. Everything's loaded in. Perfect. Now we have our RSS feed all set up.